Hello everyone, this is Professor Robert Solis. Welcome to this video lesson. I want to talk a little bit about functions today and specifically to talk about this character right here, the ampersand. See, you already know about function calls where I give the name of the function, I declare what it is that I'm going to be sending to the function in terms of the arguments within the parentheses. In this case, I'm going to be returning or sending an integer, and this function will return a string. Now, the difference in terms of this function and this one over here is that I am sending the data by reference as opposed to sending, uh, passing it by value. So what this means is that I am sending the original data. I'm specifically sending the address location of this particular variable. So one way that I can describe this is to consider a memory map. So here we have a memory map that indicates uh, what your memory will look like in your computer. And let's say that we're looking specifically at hexadecimal address C000. And if I declare a variable, let's say that I declare a variable myval, all right? So that means that myval is over here, say for example. So myval and address C000, they're pointing to the same thing. And let's say that within that memory location, I put the number five, all right? Okay, so now that I have this, let me go back over here to Visual Studio. Let's say that I want to call this function and I wanna pass this value to this function. Well, what that will do is it will take this value, the number five, and it's gonna copy and paste it. So it'll take the number five, copy it, and paste it. It's not actually copying and pasting, I'm just saying this in terms of a, a way to think about this, an analogy. But it's gonna take a copy of that value and it's gonna send it to the actual function. So what'll happen is it'll take this number five and it'll send it to the function by putting it into here, my val. Now, if this function changes my val in any way, for example, if I said something like, uh, let's take my val plus plus. Well, what that would do is it would change the value of my val locally but it wouldn't change the original. So let's say for example, in this case, I'll put a comment over here, uh, my val after this statement now is going to be worth six. But in the main program, my val does not change. All right, now that's different than what happens over here. In this case, we are passing my value by reference. Okay, so what this means is you are passing the actual address of where my val is stored. In other words, you're passing the original value. So in this case, if I were to pass the address, this thing is actually looking at this address which contain, contains the number five. So now, if I say my val plus plus, this is not only changing the value of my val here in the function, it's also changing it in the memory location as well. So now my val is equal to six. I'll say here in the function and where it was sent. All right, so let's take a look at this behavior by looking at the program and executing it. Well, first of all, let me just run the program. And you see here that I have 10, 109, 10, 1010. Let's see what's going on here. So first of all, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to assign the Solis Academy to a string statement. Now, what the reason why I'm doing that is just to show you whenever I assign something to a string, it's obviously going to replace it. So that's why you don't see the Solis Academy here because it's replaced by whatever it is that modit2 does. All right, so if I go over here to modit2, let's see if we can understand what's going on. So modit2, it looks like it takes the number, it 
adds or it increments it by one and then it's going to send that back in the form of a string because that's what this function does so we use the to string function for that so you'll notice what happens is that we are going to call mod it to we're going to send to it the value of num which in this case as you can see is nine so if i were to take a look at the function down here it looks like we're going to take that nine that was sent to the function we're going to add one to it and what we're going to return is the number 10. all right so if i go back over here this now statement is equal to the string or has been assigned the string 10 or 10 and then we're going to output that to this console and so as you can see here that's going to be 10. all right next what do i do i take that statement which is 10 and then I'm going to concatenate that with a conversion to a string of the value of num. Well, as you can see here, num is 9. Even though I changed the value of num locally within this function, it did not change it back over here where it was called from. So this is to indicate that when I concatenate the, num the number, whatever that happens to be, which in this case is 9, it concatenates it over here so we see one zero or ten and then nine because that's what this is this portion over here is ten this portion is over here is nine it's going to output that all right now let's take a look at mod it now you'll notice over here that for mod it that is going to be calling a function and it's going to be sending my value by reference well what that means is as follows over here i'm going to send the actual original value I'm sending the address of where this value is actually stored in memory. So that means when I modify it here, I'm also modifying it as well in the main program or in the main function. So if I take that value, which is 9, and if I increment it to 10, and if I return 10, as you can see over here, it's going to display that 10. So let's take a look at this. Here it is. It's displaying the 10 as a result of this C out statement. This C out statement says, okay, take that 10, which is this guy right here, and concatenate that with whatever the value of num is. Well, here locally, originally, it was equal to 9. But back over here in the program, when I changed and incremented this value, sorry, over here, when I incremented this value, I changed it everywhere. In other words, I'm changing the original value. So that's why over here in this next C out statement, you'll notice, whoops, let me switch back over here. In this next C out statement, you'll notice that we see 10, 10, because not only has the statement been assigned 10 in the function, now um, it's also changed that value of num here locally within the main program or within the main function. So that's why you see 10, 10. So that's how it works out in terms of using uh, pass by value and pass by reference. So I'll put a comment over here. We're passing by reference. And over here, passing by value. When you pass by value, it's kind of like a copy and paste type of scenario. I throw a frisbee to you, but I have a copy of that frisbee in my hand, so I've kept the original. Whereas over here, I'm throwing the original frisbee to you, so you, you can manipulate it in any way. And that manipulation kind of has like a global effect in that it affects everything. And technically speaking, what's happening is you're passing the address to the function of this variable. So if this is changed, everywhere it's changed. All right, so this is Professor Robert Solis. I hope this video lesson was helpful. Have a good day. See you next time. Mm -hmm.